You're very welcome to be out in the cottage on this New Year's Eve in the Gregorian calendar. Another celebration. Here is my list of things to do today and tomorrow. Now, I'm a great one for making lists. They're invaluable when it comes to incentivising. I'm talking about incentivising. I got some beautiful flowers for Christmas and I went to change the water and discovered that the water had completely evaporated and the roses and some of the other flowers had actually dried. So here I am making a dried flower arrangement. It's been a fantastic time of year for meeting up with friends and meeting up with family. And you know, there's something about New Year's Eve in the Gregorian calendar, because I was brought up with the traditional New Year's Eve. But there's something about it which kind of charges you a little bit with enthusiasm and a longing for change, a longing for clearing out and sorting out and getting things done. And that's what led me to this vase of flowers today. Now, while I'm thinking of it, a little update on my steps. Because you know I promised myself I was going to try to do 10,000 steps a day. Well, of course, the frost hit, the snow hit, the ice came. And it was virtually impossible to go out and walk and get those 10,000 steps in over the, well, it was about 10 or 12 days, I think, maybe a little bit longer. But anyway, what I've done is I've had a look at my watch and I'm going to update everything on the website. I'm slowly getting back up to those 10,000 steps. So no, I haven't given up. And I think when it comes to getting oneself into some kind of healthy shape for the new year, remember that things happen beyond your control. Sometimes you lose the will. Sometimes you are just involved too much in other things and and, and you lose that sense of time and, you know, you're going to bed and thinking, oh, I should have done another couple of thousand steps there. The important thing is, is not to give up and just to keep ploughing on forward. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm hoping that by the time um, I get back up to my 10,000 steps, that it's just a routine. Now look, what do you think of these beautiful dried flowers? Aren't they lovely? Well, <clears throat> just walking outside this morning, because I spotted through the window in the kitchen, dragon's breath coming along the valley. And It's been like this for most of the morning. It keeps coming and going and it just is so magical. So we'll just see it. Begin to see it just about now. There you go. It looks like a big lake or an ocean or... Yeah, isn't that beautiful? You can see the birds on the Budlia there just in front of the camera. They love to eat those seeds. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning. Now I'm looking to my left here at empty pots and giving myself a little bit of a berating here because I should have filled those pots months ago. I just don't know where the time goes. It's all so fast and furious at the moment. So making lists, making list after list is going to be very important and making a list on a daily basis has always been my way. Get the work done. Back indoors again. This is what I did with those green curtains from the kitchen. Once I washed them, I put them up in the bedroom. I think they look quite nice. Picks up on the green tones. And looking through the window outside, look at that big blossom about to break on the rhododendron. And all the lichens on the larch tree. Now, apparently, 
lichens will only grow in clean air. So that larch tree is just at the back of the cottage. Clean air. It's raining. I think it's going to rain for much of the day. So I'll get as much as I can get done outside. But what I have done is indoors, I've lit the stove. And this is some of my wood from the woodshed. Yeah, it burns beautifully. I've got these two stacked in the porch. Two big boxes of wild bird energy balls. A little update now on the orchard. So all six apple trees have now been pruned. Um, in fact, one of them, which is this one on the right, the Bramley apple, a really hard cut back because that had got huge. It's beginning to look more like an orchard now, don't you think? Still raining, but hey ho, I've managed to get a few tasks done. So I'll be able to score them off my list. Here's some beautiful rose hips on the Rosa Canina. And it continues to be a beautiful day. Though I've got to admit, I've been doing a little bit of pottering. Um, now, I'm not going to tell myself off for that. <laughs> oh, the day that's in it, huh? You can see on here, sunshine. So a typical West of Ireland day, sunshine and showers. Well, as we come towards the end of 2022, I want to take this opportunity to wish you all, each and every one of you, a very happy and blessed new year in 2023. Blessings to you all. So this is the calendar, which is still available on the website. And the months of the year and the days of the week are in Irish. And all the Celtic festivals are marked out in it. And it's filled with photographs and some writing, some interesting little bits and pieces of writing. And this is the back of it. Even some writing and photographs on the back. Then I also have, let me just get these books lined up. My first book, A Cottage in Three Acres. Now this comes with, um, I think there's about 70 photographs in there. I know the calendar has between 50 and 60 or perhaps 70 photographs as well. But this details my journey from 2004 when I stumbled upon this little place up until 2013. My second book, In Search of the Goddess Rising, this is very much inspired by living in the west of Ireland because Ireland has a very female identity. We call it Mother Ireland. And this is all about the goddess and the culture here. And the way in which the landscape and our thoughts on life and, and our thoughts on family are all influenced by the goddess culture. Ireland was even named after one of the beautiful goddesses. This third book explores my journey over the past 18 and a half, getting on for 19 years. Walking Between Worlds is an exploration of this world and the other world. And again, lots of images in it. Um, delving, weaving, going right across, you know, um, the warp, the warp in the weft, looking at the she, the fairy world, the other world, the influence of the Celts, the influence of um, all that is seen and unseen, especially the unseen, you know, there's a great depth of spiritual exploration in this and bringing us right up to, you know, the modern day and UFOs. Did you know that there was a recording? 
I say a rare protein because it's translated from the ancient Irish of um, what could only be a UFO back in the 11th century here in Ireland. Hmm, much, much to talk about and to think about there. And this little booklet, The Beyond the College Guide to the Deep Midwinter, it has got recipes, it's got photographs, it's got some little stories, it's got all things pertaining to the beautiful, enchanting, deep midwinter. All available on the website and the links are to be found under every video. A little view of Beeldon Cottage when I first bought the cottage and this was the land looking up from the road and the land looking down from the cottage. Blessings to you all.